What are your thoughts on the agreement, and what will this mean for all these fears around the health of the banking sector? Hey, good morning, Frank. Uh, it's great to be with you. So a uh, couple of thoughts about this deal at first blush. So first of all, uh, it is a good sign just to see this deal get done. It's been out there for two weeks. Uh, SVB was the first uh, domino to topple. And uh, it, it was a little strange that it took them this long to resolve this deal. Uh, so you've had two failed banks, signature, two seized banks, Signature and SVB finally get resolved. And uh, the good thing about that is, you know, as you know, and it's been reported, First Republic, one of the options that they've been looking at to kind of uh, resolve the, the issue they've had, you know, the capital hole that's been shot through that bank, uh, has been to either seek a capital infusion or a purchaser. So I think it just it's good that this one is out uh, and it can uh, uh, put attention on First Republic now that has to be resolved. Um, I think, you know, at first blush, you take a look at it. Um, it seems that they have, in all likelihood, cherry-picked the best assets. So they've, they've gotten, you know, up more than $100 billion in deposits. However, they are not purchasing about $90 billion in assets. And I would be curious as to what are the concerns about the quality of those assets and why uh, First Citizens did not opt to purchase those. And if you take a further look, there is a, a loss-sharing agreement with the government. Uh, uh, that is uh, rather opaque at, at first blush. So, so what are the you know what are the, the ramifications of this, Frank? Well, first of all, to get a deal done, your uh, you know the government has set a precedent. There is going to be support uh, and, and some concessions on the government's part for a deal to get done in the future for further uh, other banks. I would say. All right. So certainly a lot to follow. I think you are going to be taking a closer look throughout the day. Um, mm -hmm. Hugh, we didn't even bring you on to talk about this. This was obviously breaking news overnight. You did have a scoop over the weekend. Break down the report over the weekend detailing how the ongoing deposit drain from smaller banks and the larger financial giants has slowed. Give us a sense. Again, this is mm -hmm. one of your exclusive stories. We're showing the, the picture of your headline right here. What are you hearing? Yeah, no, I think this is a story that, that is a, a really you know, solid development, in particularly because all the concerns that we've had really has, have had to do with uh, an exodus of deposits, people pulling and panicking and pulling their money out of these smaller regional banks and then putting them into the two big to fail banks. So we're talking about J.D. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo. And those have been some of the biggest beneficiaries of this crisis, uh, unfortunately. And so my reporting is that, you know, uh, the very largest of those recipients, uh, you know, three out of the four biggest banks have uh, you know, confirmed to me uh, on background, essentially, that they are not seeing that influx anymore, that that influx of deposits has really slowed down starting around the 16th of, the, of this month. That was after, uh, you recall, uh, the 11 biggest American banks banded together to inject $30 billion into First Republic. That was a, a big sign of confidence, in, 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 I think, in the system. And then since then, in, in the coming days, it's trailed off even further. So, so the proximate cause of that pressure on these smaller banks has alleviated, and, you know, we're, we're the first to report that. I think that'll be shown in some of the official figures as the days and weeks go by.